Psalm 107, verses 20 and 21. <laughs> he sends forth his word and heals them and rescues them. He rescues them from the pit and destruction. Oh, that men would praise and confess to the Lord for his goodness and loving kindness and his wonderful works to the children of men. And Lord, as he goes on in verse 22, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and rehearse his deeds, rehearse his deeds with shouts of joy and singing we bless your holy name today we bless your holy name so much you've been doing we want to recall all that you've been imparting to us about the light of Jesus and the light that dwells in us about our inheritance and the royal priesthood you've made us. You've awakened us, as it says in Ephesians, you have awakened us. Like water being poured on a man who's asleep, you have awakened us with your light, you've poured it on us. We are not ignorant of these things and we are redeeming the times and you are equipping us to redeem the times we thank you Lord for the days are evil but we walk in the light as he is in the light and because we do so <laughs> there's total remission of sins total obliteration of sin because of your blood that light and we have fellowship one in another one with another we bless your holy name oh God we say, Aha. you are high and lifted up oh bless your holy name we bless your holy name You are the light of the world. A light that shines bright in the darkness. And we bless your holy name. And the almighty God, the Father, is light. And in him, there's no darkness whatsoever. shine in us and even said to us that we are the light of the world by your love you made us kings and priests unto our God we give you all the praise we give you all the honor blessed be your your name and all things are created by you through you for you and it is you who holds all things together both seen and unseen so open our eyes that we may see the splendors and wonders of your glory and of your creation and of your kingdom and we fear not because it's your good pleasure to give us the kingdom of 
Father, we just bless your holy name. A song, let a song rise out of you that just blesses you for all that he's imparting to us. Unveiling the mysteries. Taking us up higher to sit with him in heavenly places. And revealing the mysteries of this inheritance of the saints. Take us up higher. Open our ears to hear your voice. Holy Lord, taught us of faith the true substance the only substance that is and how light is behind that faith <laughs> that you've given us true substance <laughs> oh Lord we recall these things now because of the days we are in and we do not fear the days we are in your perfect love drives out all fear Lord. And Lord, where we have doubt in our faith, help us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. We just want to glorify you. Be glorified. Be lifted up, oh God. angels singing. shut down. It was not shut down. But the remnant rose up and began to make connections and began to worship and began to pray with those around the world and simultaneously enter into worship blessing you. Where the sun was setting, where the sun was rising, we see it regularly now. And what the enemy meant for evil, you have caused us to come to the precipice now of true awakening. And we have seen you being praised 
from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is being praised. who is the light of the world who came into darkness and shined and then allowed us to come into that light because of his precious blood that all we've been talking about with faith Lord all we've been talking about with the light with the authority with position and royalty wakening up the kingly anointing royal anointing in us as we minister to you in our priestly anointing, but we have to come back to the foundation, the source of it all. The blood of the Lamb. The amazing blood of the Lamb. songs are written there's a great revelation that one has experienced and tonight I believe that with all that we've been talking about all that we've been talking about that he wants to reveal to us something special he wants us to understand a bit more about the source of everything the blood of Jesus Slain on the 
cross Bless your holy name Bless your holy name Some may think that talking and singing those old songs can sound like old church. But when you're seated in the heavenly place and we've had the revelation that we've had now, and we're coming into a new structure, understanding the light, understanding our position, then we begin to see the blood of Jesus in a greater way, the true, a deeper truth deeper understanding and the days that we're in we need it because Ephesians 5 does say that he he is going to pour it he's pouring upon us light he's literally shedding light on us and we looked at that word and it says it's like he's pouring it out on us as one that's in a sleep that's being awoke we're not ignorant to these things no thank you father and we're redeeming the times because the days are evil. So we need to know that as we stand in all that we've learned, that when we stand up, our testimony is we stand up by the word of the testimony in the blood of the Lamb. Everything we've talked about is, will, has no worth without the blood of Jesus. None. It's true, he is the light. But when we stand in that light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That light is so powerful, we were talking about it, that man can't find substance. All he can find is light. But we have substance, because we're in the light, as he's in the light. Hallelujah. And we just say, thank you, Father. Back in July 22nd, I talked about the word Hooper and Chuchano, which is the word for intercession that we find in Romans 8, verse 26 and 27. I bring this up because I want to read the definition to, know, to just solidify the power that is in us, the authority that's in us, the light that's in us, and then talk about this amazing blood because this. It's the word of our testimony, <laughs> the light and the blood of the Lamb. And to recall what that definition is, I just want to read it real quick. The word intercession or hooper entuchano means this. It's producing a desired end from a fixed superior position that is above, over, beyond place, beyond time, beyond any state of being. We stand in that place, the desired effect, by hitting the mark, the target, with light and travail. And you are the light. You are an intercessor. Your testimony is growing as we become aware of his kingdom around us. But we need to remember, it's not just the testimony, but by the blood of the Lamb also. And we just thank you, Father. So for a few minutes, I want to recall, I just want to share things. And every time I share with you, I'm just sharing with what the Lord has shown me over the years. And... I can't help but worship as I sh share it with you. <laughs> when we talk about the blood of the Lamb, it is not a religious thing to me. Because of the faith being substance, it is a reality. And, and it's not just something we hope for, it's something that is. <laughs> Thank you, Father. His blood <laughs> is precious. Just in his natural man, 
He is the Son of Man. The scripture, we've said this several times in Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, that Jesus Christ comma is the Son of David. Jesus Christ comma Son of David. And then Revelation 22.16, he sends that angel to remind us, to remind the church that he is the root and offspring of David. He is the Son of Man, rightful heir to the throne of Israel. Literally everything in the earth. But he's also the Son of God, and he was sent. And we know that because <laughs> when he was baptized by John the Baptist, when <laughs> John, the, John the Baptist finally agreed to baptize Jesus, and when he came up, the heavens opened up and the King of Glory pronounced upon his son. He said, this is my son, Jesus. He pronounced upon him. And this is a kingly, an actual kingly thing that takes place when one is shown approved, when he comes of age. Jesus was 30 and the heavens opened up when he came out of the water and the voice from heaven said, this is my son who I am well pleased. And I say this because at that moment, he was recognized by heaven as really, truly the son of God, the king. So he's king of, he's both. In him was the son of man, the king of all in the earth by right and king of the heavens. What's so remarkable about, about this king is what is the blood that was in him. And before I get into that, let me see if I can explain this while I continue to worship. <laughs> when a covenant is made, there's, there were several types of cover, covenants that were made. <laughs> we know that there was a covenant with Abraham. and There was a covenant with Noah. There were several other covenants that were made. There was a covenant with David, and it says this, and I'm going to just look at this just to make sure that I know this is right. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 5, there was an everlasting covenant made earlier in 1 Chronicles 17 with David, an everlasting covenant. We've talked about this. <laughs> but in... 2 Chronicles 13 verse 5 it talks about that David made a covenant of salt and what they would do this is really what's really amazing is what they would do in the covenant of salt they would literally take two men would come together and if they had an agreement that they were going to make they would make an agreement say between two families that were making an agreement and this families two men the head of the families they would get together and they would make a covenant which means that everything that is one is everything that belongs to the other is also belongs to the other in other words everything's interchangeable in a covenant your sole focus becomes that other person and their focus becomes you and so they'd have a covenant of salt and what they do because it was very costly is to seal that covenant and agreement they would take they would reach in their pockets take out their salt bags and in a common place they would mix the salt together so the one salt and the other salt from each man could never be separated and that would seal that covenant there are other covenants that that would be made with blood you've seen this in some other in some rituals where they cut their hands and make blood where the blood would flow between each other and you couldn't separate it out what is amazing about these covenants that were made say with Abraham and even with David is that when covenants and David made Abraham and David had covenants with God but if two men made this salt covenant and made these covenants together once they made this covenant then let's say your great 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 grandchildren two of them get together and they discover that a, that a covenant was made between the two families between the two forefathers they don't have to go through the ritual anymore all they have to do is agree to that that their forefathers did and it's just as binding 
as if they did it. It's an amazing... It's an, the covenant isn't just between two people. It's, it's a lineage that begins to happen. And so <clears throat> when you have a blood covenant, the two bloods would flow together. And so it's really, truly remarkable that you could never separate those two bloods. And then so what belongs to one now belongs to the other. And in the case of Jesus, and I am... Um, <laughs> up to the point of Jesus the the blood that was used was that of of goats bulls and all that and the, you know this many of you know this that the high priest would have to sanctify himself greatly and and this wasn't covenant this was just procedure but what they would have to do is they'd walk they would take the blood they would have to do the whole process without going into the whole thing but basically through all that ritual and they had to be perfect those priests when they went into the holy of holies or they died they used to tie a bell around their their ankle and if they stopped hearing the bell that means the priest died and they had to pull him out with a rope but <laughs> wow but as far as 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 the blood the blood of bulls and goats all it could possibly do was cover the sin for a year and they have to do this yearly. So the blood of bulls and goats could only cover the blood for a year. And as a matter of fact, in the book of Hebrews, it addresses this. You know, especially in, uh, you know, I'm looking at Hebrews 10 and, and so far, Hebrews 9. That uh, the blood of Christ was so much better than the blood of bulls and rams. And what's so amazing is in Christ himself to understand the magnificence of the blood because of his lineage born of man and because of his lineage of conceived by the Holy Spirit in Jesus was the blood literally in him was the blood of both man and God it was the actual in the physical realm the DNA of God's blood in Jesus with also man's blood it is remarkable how this could possibly be so when he knew he came that he had to be he had to be crucified and when we look at Gethsemane and I've mentioned this before just to jump ahead a little bit is that in Gethsemane he knew he was going to be crucified what he was what he was crying out for was the certain cup to be passed from him in a Seder there's a cup that's used that all the impurities are put on the cup and you set that cup aside it's full of wine and you never touch it you just ignore it this is the cup he was referring to it was the time of Passover so he's asking for this cup to pass why because he was going to be counted amongst the transgressors he was going to be bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace would be upon him. In other words, the Father would turn his back on him and this would please the Father. And the Lord struggled with this. Jesus, he really did. He, he was sweating blood about being separate from his Father. But in the end, he said, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. It's really remarkable. And so when he goes on to the cross, and, and through so, so many things that had to take place to fulfill the scripture. He's hanging on the cross and the blood that is dripping from his, himself is the blood of man and the blood of God flowing together onto the earth. Down that post. The blood of man, the blood of God in him. Colossians says, and I believe it's in Colossians, I want to say in Colossians 1, the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelt. That means, look at that, we've read, read that, but have you ever considered that? That means in him was the actual fullness of God in the physical, in the Godhead bodily. The Godhead physically was in him. That means his blood, both with both man and God flowing together. Think about the communion we take and the body broken for us. It is so amazing. So this covenant being made now drops. This covenant that is being forced. It's amazing that when he dies for us in this covenant, that as he goes and, and the penalty of 
the wages of sin is death because all sin was put on him. He was made sin who knew no sin. Just like a lamb, it's put and those goats, all the sin was put on him. Well, it was put on him. And when he descended into hell, yes, the penalty was paid in death. He descended. And people may argue with that, but he descended. And but death could not hold him because he is the son of God and it had no right on him. So he carried out the penalty of death for us because of the blood lineage. And because that blood of man and the blood of God was there, and because he's the son of God, he defeated the grave and rose up. And the word says that he was made lower than the angels, but not crowned with glory and honor. And so he defeated the grave and he defeated death. And now we look at this covenant, which is so amazing. He's the firstborn among many brethren. And we look at this covenant and say, okay, how does that pertain to me? Because he was the son of man and the son of God. That includes all men. And all we have to do in that agreement, just like the nature of covenant, is agree to it. And the moment you agree to it, it's as if you just were part of that. You, as a matter of fact, Romans 6 says, you are now baptized into his death and raised in his resurrection. And when I look at this, I say, Lord, in the covenant, there's an exchange. And this is what broke me up. That in you, I, could, I see the blood of man, the blood of God flowing together. And he said, yes. And now that you've come and agreed to it, this is what I did. And this is, makes it tangible. Not just hopeful, mysterious faith. It makes it tangible because of covenant. He said, I died on the cross carrying the blood of man DNA I literally carried that to the death and because I carried that to the death and you carry that same blood you agree to this and now the exchange happens that he is life and in him is no darkness at all and what he did is I gave you my life and I took your death and I defeated it. Covenant, because of what he did, the everlasting covenant, all we had to do is say, Jesus, you are the son of God. I call upon your name, as it says in Romans 10.10, 10, and I'm saved. And the blood, as we walk, start walking that light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness because he imputes to us his life and takes our death but he defeated it and because of that this blood is so powerful now that the blood of goats and rams as Paul would say in Hebrews 9 would only cover this sin for a year in other words keep you kind of safe but you're still you're still darkness unrighteous this blood completely obliterates it and gives you pure righteousness in him pure pure forgiveness of sins to the point where they are so separated they, they the sin of anything we've done is not seen the sin is not seen he knows where we've been and where we've come from but the sin of it, the penalty of it, is completely the necessity for, a, for an offering, for a sin offering at that, or for, excuse me, for a sin sacrifice was already done. And he's faithful and just to forgive us. This is not a license to sin. Why would we do that? Paul would say, why would you do that when you've been given this resurrection life with a true resurrection power? And the resurrection power, because he obliterates sin. His blood obliterates it. Doesn't just cover it. It obliterates it. And I know that we said, you know, well, if you if you if you've been say, you know, you know, if the blood of Jesus cleanses us, and then you, you have sin. There's no more covering for that for that sin. And I was reading that, and I I understand the thinking of that. But you know, I'm gonna I want to just say something here. Let me see if I can find that that scripture a second. But it says here um, that where uh, that once and it's in Hebrews 10 I believe but once the once the sin offering once he made the sin offering 
once he took all that sin and all that darkness and unrighteousness and took it on him, there is no more sacrifice for that. In other words, he's so eternal, he was, is, and is to come. He occupies eternity. There is no other sacrifice for sin. It was done once and for all. And when I looked at that in Hebrews 10, <coughs> verse 10 through 14, but I'm looking specifically at verse 12, it says that he did it that he did it once and for all and that word once is the word epipax which means once he did it he did it all at once and once for all so all at once and once for all and the the root word is epi which means it's a superimposition you know it imposes itself upon time place and order and distributes it it's a in other words, when, you, when he did it once for all, it, was, it, it literally imposed itself upon all time, all place, and distributed to it, to it all. It is so powerful. That word once for all in, in Greek, looking at that, was really amazing. That there is no other sacrifice of blood or any go that can ta possibly do the remission, the obliteration of sin, except this one, this man that carried the blood of God and the blood of man in the same body. And he's the head of this body that we are in, the church. It's not an organization, it's his body. And we are in him, brought in joint heirs with him. This is what's so amazing. Made kings and priests unto our God. And because of this, because of the total remission of sin, you can come boldly to the throne of grace in a time of need. But we also are seated with him in heavenly places. No one can enter the Holy of Holies unless there's the total remission, total righteousness of God, the Son of God in them. And now we come boldly to that place. I say this, that it's really amazing. Uh, you know, I look at Ephesians 2. I'm just looking through some scripture. Death has lost its sting. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Uh, in Ephesians 2, verse 14 and 16, it talks about the middle, that he broke down the middle wall of partition between the two. Himself, you know, the God and, and man. And making the twain one, or the two one. One new man. It's really an amazing thing that he that this joint airship even the where it talks about apostles and prophets in Ephesians 2 I believe where the or Ephesians 4 where he's given all these for the apostles the prophets the counselors the teachers the evangelists for the building up of the building up of the body for the edification of the body of Christ or building up of the body of Christ in the unity of faith not according to someone's doctrine or court denomination but in the unity of faith what's that unity of faith unto a perfect man it's amazing. His thoughts are higher. His ways are higher. And as we wake into this, it's, this was all made possible because this one, Jesus, who came as a man, made a little lower than the angels and now is crowned with glory of, and honor, was the son of David and the son of God. He was the son of man, the son of God, and had the blood, and they flowed together. And that's why when Jesus was on the cross, he said, It is finished it is finished he completed it all so what i i want to say this that <laughs> i'm just reading revelation chapter 12 verse 10 and 2 that the word talks about because we're in some certain days this whole we're in some days that are considered evil you you have to admit that we're i feel a shift that's coming that we're about to enter into real con when i say confrontation i don't mean you know the the, the, the picture of spiritual warfare or I, I don't mean that our picture of spiritual warfare is not combating evil it's let me put it this way as we bless the Lord and we come with this knowledge of who we are and the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony we're blessing the Lord we are literally blessing him blessed is he who knows the joyful sound this is Psalms 89 verse 15 for they shall walk in the countenance of thy light but verse 14 says he the Lord inhabits his throne in his throne is the habitation of justice and judgment. 
You can't separate the two. So as we bless the Lord and as we move ahead with the high praises of God in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand, this is Psalm 149, we, <laughs> we see corrections, vengeance on the nations and corrections on the people. And we see kings being chained, leaders being chained, and their nobles and fetters of iron. And what's so amazing is that it ends, Psalm 149 ends, this honor has the saints. We keep our f focus on him. But uh, the blood of the lamb, by the word of the testimony and the blood of the lamb, we have to understand that we are in him who literally exchanged in this covenant. He took our death so we could have his life. The life I now live, Paul said, I live by faith, the substance in the son of God. See, it's if we pop you know some of the things we've been sharing and talking when we put it all together it begins to become a reality an actual tangible reality in the earth as it is in the heavens in these days the kingdom in these days that is what's happening he said in these last days in in uh revelation 10 as the trump as the angels were preparing to sound the seventh trumpet it says that in those days that that the lord would begin to reveal the mysteries he told to his servants the prophets well i'm saying here today that that this kingdom of the lord the kingdom of heaven is emerging in the earth we're seeing these things as be as a reality they don't make sense to the world they're foolishness to the world but they're becoming tangible realities to us the blood of the lamb this blood exchanged <laughs> this blood of the lamb carried your blood my blood man's blood and the blood of god into the cross to make a covenant to exchange life and he took the death and now we stand up made kings and priests unto our god and he said in luke 12 32 fear not little flock it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom the inheritance is so magnificent I, I can't even begin to comprehend it all. So there's so much more. There's so much more we could say, we could say and talk about here. But I, I, uh, <laughs> I just thank you, Father. I just thank you, Father. I just want you to, to, to just dwell on that for a few moments. There's so, there's so many more things here to share. But I do know this. I... I I see one note to remind myself to do something. I want to make a decree over you. Man, with the blood of Jesus, all things are absolutely possible. All things are absolutely possible. And that's the other thing we want to say is this. We have the absolute victory. We do have the absolute victory in him. He's defeated the grave. There's nothing that can come against us. So, Lord, we just thank you and we, we praise you. We give you blessing and honor here. We bless your holy name. I'm going to find in Ephesians, or sorry, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Sorry. Chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. I want to read this over you. And then let's, let's just begin to bless the Lord and, and, and worship Him for a few minutes. The blood of the Lamb doesn't just cover you. It completely saturates you. And it's eternal. Because it was done once for all and all for once in a place that was beyond time. It was distributed throughout time because he occupies eternity. There is no more sacrifice for sin. He was it. And in this, as you agree to it, he exchanges his life. The life of the Son of God, the King of glory, exchanges that, takes our death, which he's already defeated. This is why... This is why hell is raising up right now. This is why they're trying to shut down our singing. Nothing is more powerful than the light and glory of the sons and daughters of God lifting up their voice. Nothing is more powerful than that. And we say, Lord, we will not be silenced. And in the coming weeks, we are in a crucial time. 
We have the word of the testimony. We are the light of the world, he said. We have an inheritance in the kingdom. We speak light from the heavenly position into a situation and we'll change it. Speak into this situation and this nation and in the nation you may be listening from. Speak into it because we have the word of the testimony of him who's the lamb of God, the king of glory, and the blood of this lamb has satisfied and made, made the requirements for us to be called sons and daughters of the living most high God. Father, make it, make it real. And now I want to say this to you from Hebrews 13, chapter, uh, chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Ha <laughs> ha. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be all the glory forever and ever Amen we bless your holy name Lord. <laughs> through the blood of the covenant the everlasting covenant <laughs> we come boldly and we thank you for it. I ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest on all of us here. That we understand that when we stand up and make the blessed proclamation, when we sing the high praises of God and make decrees and stand up boldly in the face of what is going on now, that we have the word of our testimony in the blood of the Lamb. We have His life because he took ours and hid our life in him. And this light that we're shining, this faith that he's revealing to us, who, what can compare to this? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you and is enlightening you this day. We say, let it be so. Let it be so, Father. We thank you. Praise your holy name. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise your holy name. brought us up higher and we bless you face to face you are the king of glory
the Lord has risen upon me. Arise, shine, the thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The darkness has covered the earth, still the Lord will rise, and kings will come to the rising. You will reign. 